Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday morning live, and my name is Mary Jed Witsiak, and I'm coming to you from Holding the Hope Central here in Battleground, Washington. Oh, my goodness. I hope that you're well and that you're enjoying this Friday morning. It's January. It's a little bleary outside, but uh, I feel great. And what I want to talk to you today is about change. I want to talk about how as we grow in our recovery, because, you know, that's what recovery is, is growing and changing and finding purpose and meaning in our life and growing and changing and finding purpose and meaning in our growth and our change. And every change is just another platform for the next change. And um, so, but I've been really thinking lately about my own life and my own habits. Really, that's what it comes down to, our habits. And what informs my recovery and what supports growth and change. So I've been uh, doing a lot of work this past year. And, and, and um, you know, every so often you just kind of do a deep dive, right? Well, that's kind of what 2018 was for me. Was it just a deep dive into uh, all things Mary? It was pretty cool. And then it was pretty scary. And then it was kind of traumatic. You know, it's life. It's, it's when we do this work, it's painful. And then we're like, wow, that was awesome. <coughs> so here's what I know in my life is that I think I'm really well. And then I, uh, and then I look back on today and I go, wow, I was not well at all. Or I was not as well as I am now. Or so I always know that today in, in a couple of years from now, or even a couple of months from now, I could look back at myself and say, what was I thinking? I don't know if you're that way or not, but that's kind of how I am. And so I love to just keep growing and keep going and keep loving and, and growing. So I came across this list of things to remind me to do because what happens to me is I forget the basics. I forget that laying in bed, scrolling through Facebook or the news or whatever, um, when I wake up for an hour is really not very healthy. I forget that uh, because I work at home and maybe I don't have any appointments. Uh, I think, well, I can just stay in my pajamas all day. That's not very healthy. I forget that uh, routine is what really gives me structure to my life and helps me to not feel like I'm just kind of everywhere all at once with no, no uh, boundaries. My life is weird enough that if I don't have scheduled travel in the immediate future, I feel very disoriented because I get things, I have things I have to get done before I leave. And so I get a lot done before I leave. Now, that always makes me feel good when some kind of a trip comes on the calendar. So that, that happened yesterday. I, I get, so I feel like, okay, good. Whew. Now I have something I have to get done before I get there. But the reason that I want to talk to you about this today is because I came across a list that I made for myself. And it's a list of things for me to do to stay well. Now, I like to think that I'm on a, a high-level recovery journey, <laughs> that I'm kind of working on some big stuff and, um, and not that basic day-to-day -day stuff that we dealt with in early recovery, right? And that when we first started getting stable, we first started figuring out there were issues and we first started putting stuff in place to help us so that we could be focused and be present and be connected to people around us. So I came up, I, I found this list that I made about a month ago, maybe more, maybe a little bit, but not that long ago. And I, and I was surprised at how basic it was. And I'm going to share it with you because maybe you might have forgotten the basics in your life too. Um, where did I put, where did I put that? Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> okay. Um, these are ways for me to stay present. Number one, attend to the task at hand. I am so, I can't even tell you how much procrastination is a part of my makeup. I will just be like, every, my first thought is I'll do that later. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. So, but to really focus and attend to the task at hand is so healing for me. I can't describe it any other way. Um, be intentional about self-care and grooming working in your pajamas till noon, not good. Get up and take a shower. See, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to go anywhere if I don't want to. Everything I need is right here. 
So for me, I have to, I have to put it on the list, right? And so um, get dressed and ready for each day upon awakening. Not those of you that have to get up and go to work, you're like, what the hell? But for me, I had to put this on a list. Um, make reasonable lists for every day. I'm a list maker. Maintain an orderly environment. I have two dogs and it's winter. So that means I have to sweep my floor every day. I try to do it in the morning because at night all the dust settles and then I can clean it up otherwise because I get up in the morning and it's kind of gritty. I have hardwood floors. So maintain an orderly environment. When was the last time you had to put that on a list? I had to put it on a list a month ago. What happens to me is when I get... Hi, Roseanne. That's my cousin, Roseanne from Ohio. What happens to me is that when I get depressed or when I get into my own uh, illness, uh, my environment goes to pot around me. The dishes get stacked up, the bills get stacked, the laundry gets stacked. So, so for me to put on my list, maintaining an orderly environment, it, what happens is when the outside is orderly, the inside feels more orderly. And that's what I have to do for me to stay well. Um, wake, get up when you wake up is also on my list because as I said, I tend to lay in bed and just scroll through my phone. I've also bought an alarm clock so that I could move my phone to another part of the house at night. When I wake up in the morning, my phone is not accessible. These are things that I've done to maintain my recovery and to maintain my mental health in a way that I can just have a great life. Now, what happens after that, right? I still go in my office and then I'll have like amazingly great days and I'll, and I'll come up with some great changes and my life changes around me. And I'm able to navigate those changes because I have a, a, a attended to what's on this list. The other thing I've started doing is meditating. I know, a little crazy manic me. I sit and meditate for, uh, today it was 45 minutes. My goal is an hour. That's a long time, but it's really made a huge difference in my life. So I'm talking to you this morning about changes in our, in our life because what happens is we work really hard to get well. We work really hard to get to a place in our life where we can do things that other people want. Hey, Kevin, nice to see you. We work really hard to get jobs. We work really hard to get um, to get our kids back. We work really hard to have the kind of life and uh, that, that, that we've always been told is normal, right? Um, no, Kevin, it's not guided. It's me breathing. And so, oh, he asked me a question and I lost my train of thought. So we work really hard to get these things. And then those things really create major significant stress and change on us and require some additional skills. So if you've never had a job and you suddenly get a job, um, that's, that's, a, that's a whole skill set that we have to, um, that we really have to develop. And for me, if I'm working on new skills, I sometimes forget the old ones, like get out of bed when you wake up, maintain an orderly environment. Uh, you know, get dressed and take a shower every morning. Those are the things that really uh, can be, um, they, they slip away. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But what I know is that when I pay attention to the basics, then I can really focus on some of the higher level stuff. Uh, you would think that by this point in my life at 61 and a half years old, I wouldn't have to make a list that says get up when you wake up, but I do. And so it's on the list. And I read this list pretty regularly to remind myself that these are the things that I need to do because it's just me and my dog and, uh, and my house here. And, and I, and so I have to create my own environment. I have to create my own order and my own, um, uh, boundaries, so to speak, my own structure. And so that's what I do. And it's hard sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to get up. Sometimes I don't care. Um, but every day I, I do. So that's what my talk today is about, is really just paying attention to the basics. And Kevin, Kevin put up some highly, uh, highly recommended guided meditations. Thank you, Kevin. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I uh, have really taken on some new stuff here uh, around meditation and growth and spiritual development. And um, I love it. 
it's so huge. It's just, I just love it. It's like, I feel like I'm a, uh, almost a different person and my energy levels better. I feel more focused. I feel more able to do things when I don't do it. I notice, um, it's, it's an interesting piece. It's one piece of a whole big, like I said, I took a pretty deep dive this year into, uh, into personal development and it's one piece of this whole piece, but it's a big piece and it's really helpful. Uh, if you have, Oh, okay. Oh, I love it when that happens. So if you have um, any kind of a resource on meditation or something that you do that helps you to maintain your growth and still maintain your stability, I would love to hear it. Like Kevin, you know, putting um, things in the comments. I really appreciate it. So that's what's happening in my personal life. At Holding the Hope, Man, I'm telling you, changes are coming, which is why I have to write down stuff like, you know, take a shower and get dressed. Because I just want to jump out of bed and run in here and turn on my computer and start working. It's so much fun. There's so many things happening. Um, for those of you that attended the You Are Not Alone conference, um, there were three workshops that got canceled and one that has to be redone. And so we are going to be doing, I call it the makeup day. Remember when we'd have pictures done and we always have a picture makeup day? Well, we're having a makeup day for those uh, four workshops. And that's going to be on January 29th. I think it's a Tuesday. So January 29th, probably in the morning Pacific time, uh, nine to one. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have all of those topics. One of which is documentation. It was a really popular one. Group facilitation. Also, people were super sad those two weren't there. And then also uh, peer support from a strengths based perspective. How do we stay strengths based in our work as peer support specialists? So that's uh, those are coming January 29th. Um, and the toolkit and and we're doing these this conference as a part of the toolkit that we're creating. So all these webinars are going to be saved. We're going to add massive amounts of resources to them. And then they're packaged and they're for sale on the website uh, up until it, the pre-ordered price is, is $2.99. Um, and so super excited to be able to offer that to you at such a reasonable price. That's what's happening here. Also looking at creating some new stuff, right? Uh, some new uh, opportunities for people to make maybe some membership stuff here at Holding the Hope. So we're looking at, and what that requires again is, you know, I got to be able to have the basics in place in order to be able to offer you all some, some advanced stuff. And um, so if you've got any ideas of things that you'd like to receive from Holding the Hope, or you think, wow, that's so awesome. If only I could get to, to, to do, man, that's gold for me. I would love to hear from you about how we can better support you in your work, in your jobs, in your development, and also in your recovery. What are some things that we can do to really put together um, some, some ways for you to connect, especially those of you that are working in rural communities or working out there and you feel isolated, whether you're isolated geographically or not, we want to be able to give you an opportunity to connect with other peers. Um, so we're working on that kind of stuff. Just all kinds of fun stuff is coming this year. And I'm so excited to be able to be a part of your journey. Um, and, um, that's all I have for today. I'm so excited to see Roseanne, my cousin from Ohio. Hi, Roseanne. Hi, Pat. Say hi to the fam for me. Um, and also, uh, Kevin, thanks for joining us and giving us lots of meditation, lots of resources. And for those of you that are just back there loving it up and liking it up and sitting there. So I go to conferences and people are like, I watch your Friday video. They, they're lurkers. I call them lurkers. I love my lurkers. So um, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next week. And you know what to do until then, right? Stay hopeful.